Okay, good day ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about chemical reactions and this is more than likely going to be a two-parter due to the 10 minute limit. Okay, so all chemical reactions have two parts. The reactants, which are the substances that you start with, and the products, which are the substances you end up with. So the reactants turn into the products. In a chemical reaction, the way atoms are joined is changed. Atoms aren't created or destroyed due to the law of conservation of matter. There's a lot of symbols used in equations, and these are ones that you need to actually know. So for example, the arrow separates the reactants from the products. You read the arrow symbol as reacts to form. You read a plus sign as and. An S after the formula means that it's a solid. An L means that it's a liquid. A G after the formula means that it's a gas. And an AQ in parentheses means that it's an aqueous solution or has been dissolved in water. The up arrow after a product indicates that it's a gas, so it's the same as parentheses G. A down arrow after the product indicates that it's a solid, so it's the same as parentheses S. Double arrows indicate that it is a reversible reaction. There will be more on those later. The symbol um, with the triangle above the reaction symbol means that heat has been applied to this reaction. And this symbol means that a catalyst is used in the reaction. In this case, it's platinum. But it could be pretty much anything. Catalysts are substances that speed up reactions without being changed by the reaction. Enzymes are an example of biological or protein-based catalysts, but not all catalysts are enzymes. The skeleton equation uses formulas and symbols to describe a reaction. It doesn't indicate how many are involved, however. All chemical reactions or equations or sentences that describe the reaction. So let's take a look at the first one. Solid iron 3 sulfide reacts with gaseous hydrogen chloride to form solid iron 2 chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas. So you have to be able to translate those names into chemical formulas just like we've practiced many times in the past. So let's take a look at solid iron 3 sulfide. You would write that as Fe2S3 with parentheses S after it. Now it's going to react with gaseous hydrogen. Well, we know that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, which means that gaseous hydrogen is H2 with a G in parentheses afterwards. So it's Fe2S3 parentheses S plus H2 parentheses G forms, so reacts to form, so that's an arrow pointing to the right, iron 2 chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas. So iron 2 chloride it says is a solid, so it's FeCl2 with a parentheses S plus H2S parentheses G, so H2SG. Let's take a look at the next one. I want you to do this one on your own and practice it. If you have any questions, send it to me by email or meet me during office hours. And I'll be happy to go over that with you. So nitric acid dissolved in water, so we know it's an aqueous solution, reacts with sodium, solid sodium carbonate to form liquid water and carbon dioxide gas and sodium nitrate dissolved in water. So if you'll notice, there's two reactants and three products. So make sure that your equation has that in there. Okay, so we're going to go this, this way backwards. So I'm going to do the first one for you, and the second one, of course, is one that you practice on your own. So the first one would be gaseous iron reacts with gaseous oxygen to form solid iron 3 oxide. That's all you'd have to do to convert it to a sentence. So again, make sure you practice the second one and make sure that it comes out right. And if you have to check with me, by all means, please do so. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed.
So all the atoms we start with must be the same amounts and types of atoms we end up with in the reactants and products. A balanced equation has the same number of atoms on each element on both sides of the equation. So let's take a look at this one. H2 plus O2 gives you H2O. Well, when we count the atoms on the reactant side versus the atoms on the product side, we, oops, sorry, we know that it is not balanced. So let's go ahead and balance it. Hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic ga gases, so we can't change those reactants. So when you add them together, you would end up with H2O2, not H2O. So we have to tie up the second oxygen to make it come out as water, or H2O. You can't just randomly change the formula for water, so you've got to tie up the extra oxygen in another water molecule. So now we're going we're gonna to make two water molecules. So let's take stock of what we have now on each side of the equation. So we have two, oxygen, two hydrogens and four hydrogens on the right-hand side two oxygens, and two oxygens on the right-hand side. So we don't have enough hydrogens in the reactants, so let's add more hydrogens. So we get 2H2 plus O2 gives us 2H2O. You can see that the atoms balance on the reactant and product sides of the equation. So now we have a balanced reaction. So these four rules for balancing equations is incredibly important for you. You need to make sure that you are doing this each time you balance the reactions. So the first thing you do is write the correct formulas for all the reactions and products in the skeleton equation. Then you count the number of atoms of each type appearing on both sides of the reaction arrow. So the reactants versus the products. Balance the elements one at a time by adding coefficients, the numbers are the ones out front, and usually it's best to leave the hydrogens for last because they're the easiest things to add in or, you know, make multiples of. And then check to make sure it's balanced. Don't ever change a subscript to balance an equation. If you change the formula, you're describing a different reaction, so you're going to be completely wrong and end up with something completely different. You put a coefficient in the middle, uh, don't put a coefficient in the middle of the formula. So 2NaCl is okay. Na2Cl is amazingly bad because it would explode. So let's practice. We're adding methane to oxygen to give us carbon dioxide and a water. This is actually a combustion equation because we're burning methane in the presence of oxygen. So let's balance it. Our carbons balance, but our oxygens and hydrogens do not. So let's take a look at what we need to do. Let's change our oxygens and put in two. So now we have one carbon on each side, four hydrogens on each side, and four oxygens on each, each side. So it is completely balanced now. If an atom appears more than once on a side, balance it last, although generally balance it before the hydrogens. If you fix everything except one element and it is even on one side and odd on the other, double the even number and then move on from there. So we're going to try the first one together on these example equations, and then I want you to try the last three on your own. Balancing equations gets to be fairly easy with practice, but it is one of those things that you definitely have to practice. So the first one we would do, AgNO3 plus copper, gives us copper 2 nitrate plus silver. So when we actually write out the equation, first of all, we know that silver balances against itself in this skeleton equation. Nitrogen and oxygen don't, and carbon does. Or, I mean, copper does, sorry. So, the only thing we really need to balance is the, is the silvers and the nitrogens. So, if we put a 2 AgNO3 plus Cu gives us CuNO3 2 plus 2 Ag, we're balanced. Okay, so make sure that you try these other three on your own and check with me by email or on office hours and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Part two of this lecture is going to talk about the types of reactions and being able to recognize the types will not only help you um, understand the reactions going on, but it'll also help you to balance them. So let's pick up lecture number two in just a moment.